What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for watching and subscribing. We've got a great video for you guys today. We're going to go over 20 tips for new Uber drivers. This is great for those of you that are just signing up looking to either make some extra money on the side or if you're considering being a full-time driver, this video is going to give you all the tips you need to make sure you get off to a great start. Before we jump into this video, we wanted to take a second to talk about today's sponsor, Work Solo. Work Solo is one of the best uh, platforms out there for rideshare drivers. It's the only platform that gets you guaranteed pay as a driver. If you have been driving for Uber and Lyft, or even if you are new, you've probably seen that they'll offer you little bonuses, and they're not really bonuses. What they are is guarantees, and they say if you give X amount of rides in a week, we'll give you this amount of money. What it really means is if you give X amount of rides and you don't make this much money, we'll cover the difference with you. It's a good, but usually it requires a lot of rides to actually hit. But with Work Solo, you get a guarantee like that daily, and it's achievable, and it's based off community-driven data. So imagine being able to actually plan your finances out. That's what Work Solo does. Our listeners can get $10 just for signing up and linking their gig economy app. So check that out, guys. There's a link in the description below. Let's dive in. Alrighty, so my number one tip for new drivers is to utilize both apps. Drive for both Uber and Lyft. This just helps in the slow times when you can't really get rides on one or the other app. Generally, you're going to be giving way more Uber rides than Lyft, but it helps to maintain consistency if you're able to just give rides all day. The next tip I would give you is rideshare insurance is a must, and it's generally cheaper than your actual car insurance. Buckle is a great option, and that gets you both rideshare and normal coverage, but there's a lot of other companies that will cover you for as low as 9 bucks a month, and you need to do this because your traditional car insurance won't cover you if you're in an accident. Uh, generally, they just want to wipe their hands clean and not even deal with it, and on top of it, most normal insurance carriers cost a lot more money to uh, get you rideshare coverage. So you want to go with a different company than your traditional Geico, Allstate, or whatever you use. It'll be a lot cheaper, and it's just good to have that sense of mind when you're out there. My next tip is using a secondary phone. I like to buy an older iPhone and use that exclusively for my rideshare driving. This just helps separate my personal life from any rideshare stuff I'm doing. I keep all my apps for driving, like Spotify, for music, uh, on just that app. It also makes things a lot easier to write off come tax time. After that, I would say get a spill-proof drink carrier. This, to me, is a must because you've got to stay hydrated all day, and having that in there just ensures that you're not going to make constant messes in your car. They also sell some for back seats because even if you put up a little sign saying, hey, no food or drink allowed, people are still going to be sneaking chips and drinks in your car. I guarantee you that. So invest in a spill-proof drink carrier. Get that right off for it. Obviously, consult uh your accountant or whoever does your taxes or just look some stuff up online about how you go about that. Now if you don't like the secondary phone option, uh, the next thing I would recommend is actually getting some type of tablet. There's a lot of tablets that have split screen capabilities. This is so crucial if you're going to run both apps and you can have it mounted the same way you would mount any type of phone. You just have to obviously get a cheap data plan for it so that you can do your rides. But having that split screen capability is a game changer. I would actually probably say I would recommend this over the secondary phone. Uh, for me, it was always a lot easier. It doesn't have to be a big tablet. A smaller one that's uh, horizontal will be perfect. And that way it's not a big clunky iPad or something in your car. A little Samsung tablet or something like that will do the trick. My next tip on kind of that same note is when you are buying your phone mount, don't buy a cheap one that goes into the vents or suctions to the window. Uh, the suction ones kind of are horrible because they leave a nasty ring. On top of that, if you drive in a warmer market like myself, then you kind of run into a problem because the heat will a lot of times make that fall off. Get a magnetic mount. It makes it easy to pull the tablet or phone right on and off of it. Next tip is a lot of people like doing Uber and Lyft and they'll do like little live streams with it. This is actually against Uber's rules. Uh, so you do not want to do this because you will quickly get banned from the app. They do not allow you to broadcast video or audio live. 
and if you did, you would have to let every passenger know ahead of time that you were. This does not count as a dash cam. It just means you can't be streaming something to the cloud. On that note, the next tip is to get a dash cam. I can't believe every driver doesn't use a dash cam. There is a whole list of reasons that you will run into where you will wish you had video evidence. Obviously, I hope you never run into anything, but you never know. Some drunk passenger uh, claims you were driving recklessly, claims you were drinking. You, you never know. People are crazy. You want to have that video evidence. When people see that dash cam up there, I think it also just discourages them from doing anything stupid from the get-go. My next tip is get a car wash membership. This is going to be a game changer because you always need to keep your car clean. Generally, these can be 7 to 30 bucks a month, so pretty cheap. And on top of that, it just helps so much that at the beginning or the end of your shift, you can pull up to your car wash, uh, get a quick... Um, Get, get the exterior cleaned real quick and then just vacuum everything out. You don't need to go too crazy with the cleaning. You just need to have a pretty professional appearance. I always liked mine because they offered like a little cappuccino machine too. So I would always start my day by getting my coffee there, getting my car cleaned, and it was just a great way to get a shift going. My next tip is utilizing Play Octopus. Play Octopus is a company that sends you a tablet in the mail that allows you to uh, let your passengers play games and they can win prizes. You also make money when they're using this tablet, so it's a no-brainer. You can get a free tablet by using our link in the description below. My next tip is what we talked about at the beginning of the video, work solo. Again, getting that guarantee pay. They also do all your expense tracking and everything in the same app. An absolute game changer, guys. Again, the link is in the description below for uh, work solo as well. Now the next tip on my list is an interesting one and it's utilizing driver referrals. A lot of people will ask you how it is driving for Uber and Lyft. If you tell them you've had a good experience, um, they might be interested. Getting their number real quick if they're okay with it or what I always like doing was saying that I could text them a virtual business card. Those are really easy to make online and then you can leave your referral link in that digital card so that they can click right to it, sign up, and you guys can both get paid a bonus if they give the appropriate amount of rides in their first month. Sorry guys. <laughs> uh, my next tip is utilizing driver, or we just did that. My next tip is don't talk the whole ride. I think a lot of people wanna just be super social monsters and chatty Cathy's. That can get very annoying. Make sure you're not talking about yourself the entire time. If you are having an engaging conversation, ask them questions. Don't talk about how cool your life is the whole time. It gets annoying when people do that. Um, I also think Play Octopus is good for this because it's a natural conversation starter. Next on my list is always go above and beyond. There's some times where I won't do this, like I usually cancel grocery rides or cheap crappy rides, but in most cases, I'm always going to give the best customer service I can. I'm gonna help with my luggage. I'll offer to do stops, but I'll really preface to them that they need to be quick because I do this full time. God, getting blown up today. And um, that's, so always going above and beyond, giving top-notch customer service is definitely the way to go. Next is track all your amenities, write off everything. Obviously consult a CPA or a true accountant about this, but you wanna be utilizing all your write-offs as an independent contractor. It will really hurt you at the end of the year if you don't. My next tip is using surges the right way. So. A lot of people always go to surges and they just hit right in the middle of the surge in the hot zone. Problem here is you usually get stuck in a lot of traffic and it'll take you like a lot of times an hour or two to get out of that concert pickup or whatever it is. If you just get a lot of quicker surges on the outskirts of it, you'll make more money. So cancel those rides that are right in the middle and take the ones that you can go in and out really quickly. If you have the appropriate Uber rewards package, it's also going to show you the distance of that ride. So if you can do a lot of five to 10 minute rides before that surge dies, you'll make a lot more money. Next is driving the right hours. My main rule of thumb here is Monday through Thursday, 6 to 9 a.m. and 3 to 7 p.m. That's the only week uh, weekday driving that's worth it. 
Friday and Saturday, I like to start at 3 p.m. and go till about 3 a.m., so I utilize all the bar rush. Those are also just busier days in general. Sunday kind of depends on if there's an event going on, but usually 11 a.m. to 11 p.m. is a great shift to run on Sundays. Uh, my next tip is catering to bonuses. So if I see good weekday bonuses, I'm not going to drive all day to hit them. I'm just going to go out in the hours that they're offered, hit them, and go home. So if there's a three-ride consecutive bonus from two to four in a certain zone, I'm going to go out from two to four, hit those three rides, and probably call it quits after that. You mainly want to focus on weekend driving to make the most money anyways. So hitting the bonuses during the week just helps you make better hourly money if you are weekday driving and then you can make your even better money on the weekends. Next tip is gas memberships and utilizing them the right way. Once you give the appropriate amount of rides, you'll unlock a lot of great rewards from Uber for gas. If you can pair those with, with an app like GetUpside as well as a local gas station membership, I a lot of times can get 25 cents off per gallon by utilizing all the bonuses at one time. Some of them will just be cash back technically, but that does add up in the scope of driving throughout a whole year, how much money you're saving on gas, which is the most important uh, cost to be lowering as a driver. And my last tip is packing your lunch. The biggest trap Uber drivers fall into is eating a ton of fast food. And the main thing is it's not that fast and it actually ends up being a lot more expensive than if you pack your lunches. Just get a small little cooler, put an ice pack in it, pack a couple of sandwiches, piece of fruit and some chips. Uh, bring some tea or just a somewhat healthier drink for better energy. You'll be healthier and most importantly guys, you'll save more money. So that's my 20 tips for new drivers. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like, share, comment, subscribe. Check out Work Solo and Play Octopus linked in the description below. You'll get $10 just by using our link and linking your gig economy app. And for uh, Play Octopus, you'll get a free tablet by using our link as well. So thank you guys again. Stay safe out there more than anything. And stay tuned for more updates.